A fast-moving object the size of Manhattan is hurtling towards our solar system, and it will make its closest pass to Earth on December 17th. Comet, asteroid, or something else. A Harvard astrophysicist believes there's a strong likelihood this is a craft of alien origin, and the implications obviously for humanity would be profound. Avi Loeb, professor at Harvard, joins me now. Great to see you. Thank you. And I've been reading with interest what you're putting out there. It's very provocative. Well, you know, science is fun as long as you allow yourself to learn something new. And the problem with experts is that they insist on past knowledge that they promoted in echo chambers. And obviously, anything in the sky, they argue, is a comet. But uh, we should be open-minded, because, you know, if we have a visitor from the cosmic street to our backyard, it may not be a rock. It could be a tennis ball thrown by a neighbor. So let's look at the data. That is a very interesting analogy. All right, Dr. Loeb, it is called 3i Atlas. Um, give me the best case for why you think this object may be extraterrestrial and maybe alien form. Well, first its brightness implies that if it represents reflection of sunlight from a solid object, it needs to be 20 kilometers in diameter. That's bigger than Manhattan Island. And this is a giant rock. The previous interstellar objects were hundreds of times smaller. So it just doesn't make sense that the third object from interstellar space will be 100 times bigger than the previous two. In the last few hours, social media platforms have erupted with reports claiming that 3i Atlas transmitted a message to Earth, what began as scattered whispers across niche. Communities quickly escalated into a storm of viral posts, reaching hundreds of thousands of people in mere hours. The story gained traction because it coincided with fresh telescope data released to select research groups, and soon speculation turned into widespread suspicion that something monumental had just taken place. On the 5th of June, 2025, the SETI Institute confirmed that a narrowband radio signal had been received from the direction of Kepler 42b, a potentially habitable exoplanet located roughly 1-200 light years away. For over four decades, SETI has scanned the skies in search of meaningful transmissions, logging and analyzing thousands of unusual bursts of static, pulsar-like noise and satellite interference. But this signal stood apart from the rest. It did not arrive randomly. It repeated. Even more surprising, the signal's modulation patterns carried unmistakable traces of structure, as if encoded language had been woven into its intervals. Scientists who compared it to traditional codes like Morse noted the resemblance, but stressed that it was far more complex. With levels of organization beyond any natural explanation, the first press briefing revealed how extraordinary this find was. Dr. Lena Romani, an astrophysicist from Berkeley who had long collaborated with SETI, addressed the world. Her voice trembled as she described the phenomenon. She admitted that it was unlike anything the Institute had ever encountered, and acknowledged that the patterns bore the unmistakable hallmarks of intelligence. She stopped short of drawing absolute conclusions, but made it clear the discovery was far beyond ordinary space noise. Then the stream abruptly cut off mid-quest and never returned. Viewers initially thought it was a technical glitch, but when the press conference vanished entirely without follow-up, unease began to spread. Two days later, on the 7th of June, an anonymous user on an underground forum posted what they claimed was an internal NASA briefing document. While the source seemed questionable, the file contained technical data that was far too elaborate to dismiss. Spectrograms, waveform breakdowns, encryption models, and even AI-assisted translations were included. The most shocking part was a partial transcript of the decoded message. It stated, We have watched, we come in cycles. You are not alone, prepare. The starkness of the words fueled an online firestorm. Independent researchers, data analysts and amateur astronomers rushed to examine the document, cross-referencing its content against known signal analysis techniques. The thread exploded across platforms, leaping from online forums that investigate the unknowns of our world to mainstream social media with entire communities working in real time to unravel the mystery. By the 9th of June, the information vanished. Threads were deleted, accounts banned, links erased, even archived snapshots disappeared. To many, this erasure only reinforced the suspicion that something genuine had slipped out. Two days later, on the 11th of June, the White House issued a carefully worded statement. It acknowledged that anomalies had been detected in communication arrays, but insisted there was no evidence 
suggesting an intelligent origin. The message also urged the public to ignore misinformation spreading on unofficial platforms. That same day, NASA's Deep Space Network went offline for what they described as scheduled maintenance. SETI's official website locked into restricted access, and the Allen Telescope Array livestream, once running around the clock, displayed only an error page. The timing of these shutdowns was too precise to be dismissed as coincidence. Soon after a whistleblower, using the alias Jake, stepped forward. He had previously worked with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and his credentials were verified before his profile was scrubbed from the internet. He revealed that the transmission had not been a one-way occurrence. Earth scientists had sent a ping back to the source, and multiple responses had been received in return. These replies were transmitted across different frequencies, carrying the unmistakable fingerprints of intelligence. When pressed further about the content of the new messages, he revealed only that it was not a threat, but an invitation. Despite the magnitude of this revelation, media coverage dwindled. Major networks avoided the story. Independent journalists reported unusual difficulties in publishing and podcast episodes covering the subject vanished from their platforms. Even notable scientists who spoke out seemed to retract their statements. Neil deGrasse Tyson briefly wrote that first contact might not be dramatic, but instead strangely ordinary, only to delete the remark shortly afterward. What should have been the most significant news of the century seemed to dissolve into silence. As the days passed, strange visual phenomena were reported in the skies. On the 15th of June, amateur astronomers in Chile, Japan and Canada began documenting flashes of light from the direction of Kepler 442b. Unlike supernovas or stellar bursts, these appeared as deliberate pulses repeating in a pattern. Three flashes followed by six, then three again in cycles occurring roughly every 19 hours. Some observers linked the sequence to the original transmission intervals. Others speculated it might be a countdown or a form of secondary communication. The absence of confirmation from mainstream observatories only deepened the mystery. While governments and institutions maintained silence, the public conversation spread through social media, encrypted channels and grassroots networks of sky watchers. Every new observation was shared, debated and analysed, but official acknowledgement remained absent. For those who had followed the story from the beginning, the sequence of events formed a clear timeline. Their structured signal was received. It was decoded into an intelligible message. Earth responded and the reply was answered. Then came a coordinated effort to suppress public knowledge. The decoded phrase prepare became the focus of debate. What were humans being asked to prepare for? Some argued that it was an announcement of arrival, a warning that a presence was drawing nearer. Others believed it was an invitation for dialogue, a call for humanity to step beyond isolation and into a galactic community. A smaller group feared that the message signaled a shift in cycles, suggesting that whatever intelligence had reached out had done so many times before, always watching, always waiting, returning according to some unknown timetable. The flashes of light repeating in their 363 pattern were seen as proof that the message had extended beyond radio waves and into visual signaling. This dual method communication demonstrated a sophistication that left little doubt as to its deliberate nature. Combined with the whistleblower statement that Earth's response had been acknowledged, it formed a chain of evidence too compelling to ignore. The silence of institutions has become its own message. By withdrawing access, restricting data and avoiding the subject in public forums, they have only confirmed the reality of the phenomenon to those who have seen the evidence. Instead of calming speculation, the silence has fueled suspicion that humanity stands on the edge of contact and that governments are struggling with how to manage the revelation. The events of June 20, 2025 mark a turning point in humanity's story. For decades, people speculated about the possibility of receiving a message from the stars. Few expected it to arrive with such clarity, repetition and undeniable structure. Fewer still imagined that it would be followed by deliberate suppression and silence. Yet the facts remain. A message came. It was decoded. Earth replied and the reply was answered. The truth of this moment may not be broadcast across televisions or printed in headlines, but it exists in the records of those who paid attention. It exists in the flashes of light witnessed by sky watchers. 
in the documents briefly leaked online, and in the word prepare that continues to echo in every conversation about what comes next. 